quantum mechanics is famous for being hard. However, the mathematical framework at its core is easy to understand as it's just simple geometry. In this video, I'll take a relaxed approach and skip some details so that it only requires high school geometry to understand, and at the end of the video, I will mention the elements that were skipped. Let's look at the electron. It has a quantum property called spin that has no classical analogous, and spin can have one of two values, up or down. A first attempt to represent this mathematically could be with the binary numbers 0 and 1. But the problem with this approach is that it is a classical solution and it won't work for a quantum problem. The solution will be to use the real plane and represent up and down as two vectors. It might look like the obvious choice is an up and a down vector. However, up and down are the opposite of each other and the most opposite types of vectors are actually perpendicular ones. Because of that, we'll use the traditional unit vectors along the x and y axis. In quantum mechanics, vectors are written using Dirac notation, and these vectors are named 0 and 1, and not to the classical world. We know that spin can be in states up or down, but if you ever heard the story of Schrodinger's cat, you know that it also can be in both states at the same time. This is called superposition. And just like the cat story, when we try to measure the spin, we only get one value, either up or down, never both. And more than that, each one has a probability of being measured. So, how can we represent superposition and probabilities on the plane? We can try to define a state in superposition as a vector that has non-zero coordinates, for example, vector v. In this example, the x component is 2 and the y component is 1. And since 2 is bigger than 1, when we measure this state, it should be more likely to get the result of 0. Let us look at some maths now. From probabilities, we know that the probabilities of measuring 0 and measuring 1 must add up to 1. And from geometry, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared is equal to the norm squared. If we combine these equations together, we get that the normalized coordinate squared add up to 1. This tells us that we should represent states by vectors with length 1. And this equation is the familiar unit circle equation. We now can represent any quantum state by a vector on the circle. And the square of the coordinates gives us the probabilities of measuring 0 and 1. The next question is, how do we represent a state involving in time? We know the states before and after must lie on the circle. Because of this reason, functions describing time evolutions must be rotations centered on the origin. These are fundamental properties of quantum mechanics, and it turns out that they have a very nice geometry meaning. So in summary, states are unitary vectors on the real plane, the coefficients squared are the probabilities of measuring 0 and 1, and the time evolution of a system is given by rotations centered on the origin but that is using a simplified version using just real numbers. In the quantum world, complex numbers appear. However, the basic geometry of quantum mechanics does not change a lot, and only some modifications are needed to use complex numbers and still keep it simple. This video was done for the Summer of Math Exposition. I hope you liked it.